Hey, hey, Nicole. Hey, hey, Nikkei. We're back, we're back, we're back. Welcome back to another episode of Movies That Move We. We got another movie line up for you today, but before we jump into that, we have to talk about our Our sponsor. All right, so we started off with Irby Entertainment. Irby Entertainment is your international DJing company for all your DJing and party and entertainment needs. And it's also embarking on urban apparel. So definitely look out for Irby Wear coming to you. You can find Irby Entertainment on Facebook. Okay. And then we have Cher Dazzle Salon in Chesapeake, Virginia, who takes care of her look. (laughs) This whole, whole, yeah, they take care of her. Yes, Kiki Johnson, as well as the lovely ladies of Sheer Dazzle Salon, will get you right. I have my protective style going on, and I'm wearing my headband today because guess what? It's almost time again. (laughs) These (laughs) edges are disrespectful. So, <laughs> so to so to cover that down because I I, I don't have baby hair. I, mean, I have edges now. Don't get me wrong. You all see my edges; they're real. But I can't make them obey like like these teenagers can, and you know have them quaffed down and swirled out. So, sheer dazzle salon, and that's at Sam Circle in Chesapeake, Virginia. And you can definitely find Kiki on on um, Style Seat as well as Instagram, as well as Facebook. All right. And then we have Color Color You Cosmetics. Cosmetics. Oh, my goodness. Under the leadership of Karen Stalling, who is Norfolk, Virginia raised, but she has two places of business. One is in Lithonia, Georgia as well as in her hometown of North Virginia off of Little Creek Road. So if you're interested in Color You Cosmetics, um, today I am featuring the eyebrow pomade and the mascara and the and the lip balm. I'm going very, very basic <laughs> um, today. I just wanted to do like a simple face so you can see how clear my skin is when I don't wear makeup. And that's also thanks to Color You Cosmetics because they do have a cosmetic line when it comes to skincare. So... That's something to consider. And you can find Karen and Color You Cosmetics on Instagram, Facebook, as well as online. You can look for the website, Color You Cosmetics. All right. And look, the bare face situation today was coincidental. I just was like, I can't. <laughs> well, I can't go but so bare because if I don't put mascara on and I don't put eyebrows on, you're like, we don't know what she's feeling. We just, we just, <laughs> that's too much of a blank slate. I, I, I have to, I have to embellish something. So until yeah. I can get my coins together and do the was it microblading and have my mm-hmm. eyebrows permanently affixed to my face, then Miss Griffin. Oh yeah, another thing I'll call you cosmetics. Let me also add, they sell their own brushes and their oh. own, you know. So so you don't have to worry about going into a store trying to figure out, you know, what brush kit to get. They sell a complete kit, so you definitely want to get that from them. I love their kit. Well, I did have to put these on today because I didn't want I didn't want to be the feature film scared. <laughs> Wait, we're talking about it. We're talking this earlier. Woo! <laughs> nah, nah, we didn't need that. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 look, I, I was way too tired. The, the, the world beat me up today. So I was like, you know what? Who well, I got to get- fight? I got to fight the world for you, Nikkei. Do I? Do I? Got to put my Vaseline <laughs> on. What I got to do? Take these earrings out. We, okay. We'll talk offline. We'll talk okay. offline. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. you know, to- you, only, you, only, you only caught triple away in a, in a tank of gas. So <laughs> with gas prices, <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to have to get to you next payday. <laughs> I'm going to beat them up next page. Tell them I'm coming the week after next. I'm, I'm going to let them know. I'm, let, I'm like, okay, she's I'm short, let but she fights. I fight. <laughs> I, not I fight, but I fight. She fights. She fights. Yeah, I only had time to moisturize today. That that was it. Moisturize and a little lip gloss. And, yeah. Yeah. So, and, and that's, thank and that's God, the future. My, thank, thank God I'm not completely jacked up over here. So. <laughs> Anywho, moving right along, what you snacking on? What you got over there? Well, you know what? I went to one of my favorite places that reminds me of how, 
you know, um, financially challenged, I am, which is fresh market. <laughs> <laughs> no, Laura, I'm not going to, you know, I, I, I have money, but you know, I don't always have fresh market money, but fresh market has stones and they have pumpkin spice scones, you know, because, you know, you know, please, Nikkei, if, if you're going to talk about my scones, if you don't say some of my pumpkin spice, don't don't do it. So anyway, I will be I'll be I'll, I will be snacking on something that's a little bit highbrow this evening. Pinky so. And I also have Beagle tea, and you all can get this from any store. Yeah, right. Let me move this way. So and I have a cinnamon stick, okay. and I added a little um, oat milk to it and a little brown sugar. Yeah. So you said Beagle. Mm hmm. Now, what flavor is it? Let me see. Excuse me, Bengal. Bengal. Oh, Bengal. Okay, Bengal. Yeah, okay. Bengal. Yeah. Spice. Oh. And it's um celestial traditions. Is that what it says? Celestial, was it seasonings? Oh, y'all know I can't see. Yeah, it's, it, just look for the tag on the box. Just look for this. Look for, look. Yeah, look for the tag. Their boxes are always so detailed. You can sit there, sip your tea, and like look at them for hours and find yeah. all kinds of things on their boxes. Yeah, you can. So that's why I'll be snacking on this evening. I, I wanted to go with the popcorn and you know something else, mm -hmm. but I, you know, I was I was feeling you know rather you know fancy, fancy, fancy. So I don't have a snack. I got my usual. H two and O in a glass, but come on, K. That's like three weeks running. Come on now, uh, it's, it's it's been a rough three weeks. They've been beating up on me for that long, but a friend of mine did did send me a gift. Oh yes, you all have to see this. Yes, and so, please support. Wusa moments in North Carolina. Um, she had asked online, you know, what did people think of? you know, the first time that they met her, what comes to mind. And she and I have never met in person, but I told her that the first time that, you know, I, one of the first times I saw her online, she had this wooden frog that I was fascinated with. So she was like, girl, what's your address? And the frog arrived today. So this is it. And it comes with this stick and you... It croaks. And it's so relaxing, just the sensation of like running it across the ribbed back and the sound that it makes is hollow on the inside. And when you're done with it, you just put the little stick in its mouth. So thank you, Tara from Musa Gifts for sending that to me. I love it. It's That's beautiful. awesome. You also mentioned that she, um, that she has a son with autism and- yes. And it seems like some of the things that she focuses on may help children or adults that, you know, have that same condition. So definitely, yeah, you know, check her out regardless of whether or not you have someone that is autistic in your life or yeah, not. Yeah, she moves some moments on, on Instagram. She's um, a visual artist and she's into all aspects of art. So mainly she does paintings and stuff like that. But She's also very much into music and again, things like this as well. So check her out on Instagram. All right. Now we're going to get into creepy stuff. So I think just to set the moment, I'm just going to turn my light back off. I'm leaving you know, my light on. <laughs> because, <laughs> because it kind of like, you know, makes, you know, makes me look like an aberration. Nicole, you can't hear us. <laughs> so tonight. <laughs> And see, she she picked the right movie to do this with. It's a black and white movie and right. Night of the Living Dead. <laughs> <laughs> so in this film, once again, we see um, Dwayne Jones, which we talked about before in Ganja and Hess. This was his, this was his first film. The first mm -hmm. thing he did. And Ganja and Hess was his last. One of two. So the question was asked of uh, George, what is his name? George Romero. They were like, so what made you pick this guy? And he was like, yo, 
He showed up and he delivered. He was like, out of everybody else who came in for the audition, he 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 gave it everything. So he got the role. As well. Plain and simple. And um, if if you haven't seen the movie, like, why haven't you seen this version? People, please see this version before you see the 1990s. What is it, 1990, 1991 version? See this mm-hmm. one. See this one first because he walked in on the scene and was like, I don't care who you are, I need to live. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to batten down the hatches and uh, we're going to figure out how to survive this thing and ride this thing hey. And it's interesting to me because I'm trying to figure out, you know, and, and I know d- depending on where you grew up, you know, what your belief structure is and all that, and that, that goes to place, you know, how people haven't seen it, you know, or at least be, you know, vaguely mm-hmm. familiar with it because, because like I was telling you, growing up, even though this movie came out way before I was born, not too, not too way, but way enough, <laughs> I, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't born yet. I did have an opportunity to see it as, you know, as a child because, you know, they would show as a creature feature. So either Mm -hmm. either on Friday, late Friday night, late Saturday night, you know, or in the summertime. I I can remember like I was telling the K, them showing all these old classics, like all the Hitchcock stuff and, you know, all the alien, you know, movies that, you know, when you look back on now, you're like, that's got to be Tim Four. Is that really Tim Four? Is that somebody's grandma's Tupperware container as a spaceship? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know, is that a wire hanger? <laughs> is that someone wearing a carpet suit? I mean, so these well, things you know were. <laughs> it, it's this is one of those things. It's either you're into horror movies and zombie flicks, or you're not. So I kind of get why people wouldn't see it because I don't think, heck, I don't think I saw it until like the last ten years. Because okay, be no, we we can't no no no, no we. Well, usually, wait a minute, we wait can't a use you as a barometer at all because you know you well, grew up you, you in can't asylum. use me as that much of a barometer, but I'm not a big horror person. Yeah. I'm not a huge horror person. So this wouldn't have been on my radar where everyone else would have been like, oh my God, you gotta see it. It's like I don't like scary stuff like that. Now I'm a little bit, now that I'm all grown up, I'm a little bit more willing to to sit down and watch it because now my attitude is it's somebody it's, else's home we'll talk about that later <laughs> or in a theater we'll, we'll talk about that when we get to candy man because yeah <laughs> that was one <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah th- th- but this it's like I don't know when it comes down to stuff that was like done in the sixties, it's like, why haven't you seen that? It's kind of dusty and hokey and, you know, you could sit there and watch it with the bag of potato chips and let it pass over you a little bit. And because now the graphics are so unrealistic. and that that's that's a part of these old films you have to appreciate because they did the best with what they had. So you have to kind of almost time travel yourself and right. pretend that you were never exposed to HD, pretend that you were never exposed to um to bold speakers, pretend you were never exposed to any any um type of co- computer graphics at all. Mm-hmm. You know, and all the engineering that goes behind these movies now. Pixar, pretend that you never saw a Pixar movie right. and put yourself in a place of what it had to be like to watch this in 1968 on a silver screen, you know, either in a darkened theater or at a drive-in, because that's where, you know, this, you know, ended up being seen. And then later on, of course, on televisions across, you know, the nation. Um, so mm-hmm. let's kind of talk about what, what what the premise of the movie is, because, you know, you say Night of the Living Dead, and that could be a lot of things. So, okay, kind of tell us about the premise of the movie. So... What happens in this movie is um, and I, I'm sitting here looking up <laughs> because it, it's it's by today's standards, it's silly, but this is really what people were worried about 
in the 60s. Uh, <laughs> there, there was, the earth was hit by radiation, which caused dead bodies to um, reconstitute or reincarnate and begin walking around and um, basically start eating the living humans again. Okay. And not so, scones, not, not scones from Fresh Market. They, they weren't interested mm -hmm. in those. Uh, no, not in the least. Not in the least. They they were just popping up out of graves like daisies and looking for live flesh to to gnaw. On. Oh. Human, human buffet. And so what I what I found interesting in my brief reading here was um between the nineteen sixty eight version and the nineteen ninety one version was what the zombies were meant to be a metaphor. Yeah. For. And I was like, well, that's vastly different. Well, you know, what I want to, what I want to focus on is the fact that when you think about what force they use in order to resurrect these bodies and what was a really big fear back then was radiation when you think about nuclear weapons nuclear war you know you know someone hitting the big button you know because you know this is on, this is um on the heels you know of what happened during world war ii mm -hmm. you know and you know and then we had the you know the crisis of you know of you know you know using nuclear energy and you know and and you know having these reactors melt down and what does that really mean and they knew that this stuff was dangerous but how dangerous. How dangerous. You know, to, to, what, to what extent would, could we really take it? Now, we knew that it could evaporate people in the walls. We knew that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we knew that it could, you know, diminish you to nothing. We knew that. But mm -hmm. if just, if you just put, if you, if you put that reactor on 375, is that cool? what would it, what would it do? <laughs> <laughs> would it give you zombies? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, well, not only that, but you know, it's like, oh, it's going to cause an alien invasion. That aliens are going to be alerted that we're here, and it's like, what? Which aliens are you? T huh? What? <laughs> you know? Okay, well, okay so, let's pause there because the fact that we're arrogant enough to believe that any intel because because they, they, they don't call aliens dumb. If you ever listen to how they describe them, they consider them intelligent life form. They, that's what they say. They're intelligent. So, Earth is ghetto. Why would it come here? I mean, when you think about, if we're, I mean, really, I'm honest. It, if we we do some stuff that makes them say, "Ooh, child," <laughs> all you have to do is watch. All you have to do is watch a few minutes of anything that we watch on television. A few Pick TikTok, a reality show. Pick a reality, reality shows. TikTok. Listen to some of this music that we have going on. Yeah, I'm, I'm about to sound real old folkish, and then you know they're like, you know what? We can do better. We, we can. So you know, so when people say they've been abducted by aliens, I'm thinking to myself, and they sent you back. First of all, it came for you. I mean, again, you know, <laughs> I I just can't imagine traveling millions yeah. of light years for Wait us. Wait a minute, they came millions of years <laughs> and they picked you. In particular, out the middle of a cornfield, you, you, <laughs> you, and that's and you know that's a discussion for another day because you know what yeah. we should do. Okay, I'm about to bounce. We should we should do Children of the Corn. When I tell you that movie did something to me, there there are very few movies I could say were impactful, but Children of the Corn, the first my, one, man, my offspring, my <laughs> offspring was losing her mind when we tried to watch that one. She was like, okay, no, I can't. That's it. I'm done. I'm out. <laughs> what kind of movie do you have me watching? <laughs> but Night of Living Dead was kind of like the same, that same level, you know, when when it came out in 68, because people were really shook. I think, you know, yeah. they were looking like, okay, this is actually possible. I don't know. I don't I don't see the probability of it actually happening. But people were shook by the whole concept of dead bodies coming out of the ground, 
to eat of human. I'm really surprised that I'm really surprised that um. You know, you know, because this nation is kind of puritanical. I'm not surprised they really kind of like let this slide, though. That there, there weren't some type of <laughs> protest going. Because you know, you think they did book burners over less. So the fact this movie even slid under radar. Did I miss something well, in our studies about this? Well, wait a minute. What I what I find <laughs> interesting, I was searching for, to, you know, to make sure I had my little year reference right because I was about to put 1963. And I saw a question online that said, why was the movie banned? And I was like, well, so I had to, to check that reference. Apparently the 1991 version of the movie was banned in Germany. And I was like, wow. Why? And the reason why it was banned in Germany was because it was too much blood and guts. I was like, what? This is interesting. I thought this generation Very. could handle blood and guts. Especially considering that in the 90s was like the emergence of um, very, very volatile video games. So it's interesting that they that they they chose that hill to die on. When I think of everything else that was going on in the 90s, we decided, oh, this is where we're going to bring out the pitchforks and the, and the, you know, and our little tiki torches and say you know we're not going or that's what we did <laughs> in germany okay i was All like right. well that, i mean it. i didn't dig into that article because it was like just before we came on but i'm like that's interesting that's that's, that's very interesting. That's interesting especially europe because you know they tend to be a little bit more they're forgiving. less careful than we are <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, when it comes to certain things, they, my, but, but but aren't they? But aren't they the home of uh, Germany? Aren't they like the home of um, Grimm's fairy tales? Didn't didn't that come out of there? Kidnapping and, children and ma'am, yeah. my, mm -hmm. thing, my thing is, I'm I'm gonna need them to loosen up. The the fact that your forefathers authored that stuff and passed it along as children's literature. <laughs> Now okay. I can appreciate it as an educator, but, but that stuff was dark. So my thing is, y'all should have no. Can't, nothing get darker than that. Okay. Nothing get darker than that. Okay. And everything teaching you a lesson by a kid dying, basically, or being killed. <laughs> <That's just like, laughs> Every story. Every story. story. <laughs> if you do it this, you're gonna happy die. End it in sight. <laughs> Come on, Germany. Come on. You're now. gonna get poisoned and you'll die. <laughs> You lie, you die. <laughs> you steal, you die. You don't honor your parents, you die. Like, you, you eat something, you want to get that. I mean, death was like, I, I don't get it. The okay, ultimate German, punishment. It's, <laughs> so, and, and you were worried about zombies that we know, well, I'm not going to say aren't real because it, saying it that there's, places. yeah, they say, because you know, you know, you're from the islands, you know that they say through, I'm not gonna say what religion because you know you just never know, and I, I don't need those problems. But the thing is, is that they say certain religions can, you know, through you know, some things yeah. they can make. And I and I and I know people that have spoken of that when I was growing up, and it just made me want to be a better person. Because you hear stories like that, you're like, well, what do I gotta do not to? <laughs> uh -huh. Oh yeah, I've heard not I've I've heard those stories. I've seen some videos, and oh, I'm gonna oh, tell you. And, when we get off of here, I'm going to tell you something me and my dad was talking about the other day. I was like, what? I'm telling you. Yeah. Yeah. So you got people out here that could tell you that the zombie part is real, but the the cause of it, like the, you know, radiation. The why. Reason yeah. why. And exactly what they do but when they. I think what it is back then to get back to the original question the reason why the United States wasn't like, oh, we have to shut this down is because it made the military look good. Because notice who came rushing in to clean everything up. Guns blazing, chest out, you know, they were semi-heroes of this thing. And I say semi-heroros for a reason. Okay, well, share why. Okay, because at the end, who was the survivor before they killed him off? 
who was the, the, the one person, one human who survived. It was, uh, gosh, Dwayne Jones. Dwayne Jones' Dwayne character. Jones. Everybody else in the house died. Sorry to give it away, people, for those who didn't watch the movie. It's an old movie. Anyone would have told you this was what happened. But he's the one who survived. And as he was getting ready to come out of the house, from a distance, the military, as the military does, is like, oh my gosh, Something afar off is moving. Kill it. Ask questions later. You know, because they have to protect their earth. And there you go. So you you really, in this sense, had two heroes. The military is cleaning and protecting the nation from zombies. And this guy actually survived the zombie apocalypse only to die at the hands of the protectors themselves. Again, it all goes back to what the metaphor of this whole thing was supposed to be to begin yeah. with. Yeah. It was it was very loud. It was very loud. Well, what I find to be interesting is the fact that if you look at the time this movie came out, it was also a time where they were trying to drum up more support for the military. Mm-hmm. You know, for people to, you know, to join and be a part of 68 is very pivotal year when it comes to a war in particular. Ooh, um, that was not very thing. popular at the time. That was not yeah. very popular at the time and it was Vietnam. Mm-hmm. So I wonder how many people knowing that they're not fighting quote unquote zombies or aliens or whatever, looked at it as, you know, how powerful and mighty our military is and wanting to be a part of that, you know, um, and they may have taken it that way or a generation of young men that weren't old enough to serve yet, but it kind of ingrained that mindset into them. The way, you know, when you're little and you play a GI Joe's and you say, I want to be in the military or you play a bar doll, say, I want to be a model, that type of thing. So it'll be mm-hmm. interesting to, if they could tease out how some of these these movies at the time that had military leanings, how it impacted those that right. ultimately went on to serve, yeah, and join. Mm-hmm. Just like we talked about how their movies that influenced people to go to college or to, you know to go through certain right. professions. It, you know, it, I, I would be interested to know that. So, mm-hmm. on for the last few minutes that we have, let's talk about the deeper end, the metaphor that they say that all this was supposed to represent. Or do you right. want to leave that for people to make that make their own determinations on that? Hmm. I mean, I think it's it's rather obvious because, quite frankly, when you watch the nineteen sixty eight version, there is only one black person in the film. Do we die first? This is the one time he did not die first. <laughs> I'm like, really? This this is that one time. And and and, and here's the thing, you know, 68, it, it's still, you know, the height of civil rights. The civil rights movement. <laughs> yeah. There, there's a lot of things that were still going on. You know, there was still it was still controversial to see black people and white people engaging in certain ways on the big screen. I think um around that time did this was shortly after Nat King Cole had his show. Own show, yeah. His own show and people were kind of up in arms in that they're like, we don't want to see a black guy. But his show was very successful. And I forgot who was it Di- Diane Carroll mm-hmm. had her own show also. She did. There were a, there were a couple of big name black act singers, actors who had their own show and it kind of shook up the entertainment industry because, it, you know, sponsors were like, hold on, this is way too much. We can't have just black people having shows. Oh, because- as a matter of fact, Diane Carroll's show was Julia. I just remember that her show was called. Julia. Okay. But, but there were also like variety shows like Nat King Cole's where he was, yeah. the, he was the center of the He was show. a host. Yeah. He was the right. Show. So, you know, there were things like that that were happening. And there was another one, 
um, gosh, I wish I had looked this up ahead of time, but there was another um, TV show or a movie where um, a black a black character and white character kissed and everyone lost their mind. And then you have this. And I want to say was Star Trek was the first the first television show that actually had had that to happen. That, that great. It, it, Star Trek was the first television show. Yeah. Yeah. And and I don't remember if it was before or after this that when that episode happened, but it was like there were a lot of little things that were happening within this window that was kind of shaking up the television industry. So when you have this character who walks in, he's in this space alone with a white woman. Um, it's like her immediate reaction is, uh, who are you? But she's also in a state of shock because she just watched her brother die. She doesn't completely react the way you expect a white woman in this situation to react. And he immediately starts bossing her around. It's like the react the reaction you expect for 1968 is not what it ought to be. And I watched it this go around thinking, huh? I wonder what it was like in the theaters when people saw that. And mm -hmm. I wonder what it was like when he slapped her to get her attention. Man. In the theaters, what people thought about that. And when the family came up from the basement and he said, listen, I'm in charge up here. And if you want to be in charge, you're going to do what I say. You want to stay downstairs and you be in charge downstairs. <laughs> I wonder what the reaction was at that point, because he wasn't taking any stuff from anybody mm -mm. once he walked up in that house and started boarding stuff up because he told them point blank. He said, so wait a minute. You heard this girl screaming up here all this time and you made no moves to help her. And now you want to come up here and, and be boss. No, be no. Mm -mm. no, that's not what's going down. If you come up here, you going to work. And to add to that, he was the younger guy. Yep. Okay. So you, you're sitting here watching a, a power dynamic shift, you know, and we're talking and some culture and some cultural norms being broken because he challenged all over the yeah. place because heck, even in, 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 in this year, up to this time, the only space that it was acceptable to see a black man and a white man engaging like that was the boxing ring. Mm -hmm. That was the only place where, where you could see a black man and a white man duke it out. I won't get into some other things that, that happened that uh, probably would have had people up in arms in, in that, that, in that space. But, uh, yeah, there was a lot going on that challenged racial norms. And, well, I think the only thing that saved it and allowed it not to be as controversial was because it was a horror film. That had it been more on a like on um the Killing Mockingbird level, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. more that you know, more racially dynamic and it, and the the focal point of it center around race, then that would have been something different. But when you right. kind of do it in a fictitious, fictitious excuse me, way, mm -hmm. and you're talking about, you know, things that we know will never happen, like zombies come to life due to radiation. I mm -hmm. think that I think that there were some people that saw for what it was and it was, and it was a problem for them. Then I think other people, it it kind of washed over them and they didn't get it because it was in a horror film, you know? So it's like, right. it, because it depends it was like on everyone. everyone. Everyone there is afraid of something, and this is why they're acting like that kind of thing. Uh, what, yep, yep. And, it, and, it, and what it did was fear, 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 and death really are are equalizers when it comes to people. Because I don't care how rich you are, how poor you are, you we all can experience fear at on the same level. Mm -hmm. And it's nothing your money can do to ease that. <laughs> because if your life is in danger. 
you can't, you know, with, within certain parameters, you can't pay for your life to be spared in that, mm-hmm. in that, re, in, in that regard. You just cannot, especially when zombies don't care nothing about your money. You know, <laughs> they see you as another brain. And they're like, oh, pork chop. <laughs> Yeah, so I was like, okay, right. and you know, and you, you, know, you, you have an impressive portfolio, so but I'm still gonna eat you, yum yum, mm-hmm. eat them up. Right. So, so when you look at this movie when it comes to 1968, you know, what would you give it? You know, for a 1968 film, because you can't judge it t- totally on our standards because you know that would be like unfair. In 1968, I probably would have given this a five. I probably would have been given it a five as little black me in 1968 because we're like, yeah, he slapped him. (laughs) He he, he slapped that chicken and he fought that guy. (laughs) Well, for me, for 1968, I would give it a five because, you know, it's, it's, it's a classic horror film. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's and it's one of those things that anytime we're talking about it now and we're sitting clear in 2021, then it's still impactful and it's memorable. And mm-hmm. someone decided to make it again. See, that, that I don't know whether that is. <laughs> I have a real problem with remakes. I don't know whether that is a pat on the back or a a way of reminding us how people have run clean out of ideas of their own <laughs> original ideas. Why we gotta always tinker with stuff? Why can't we just let certain things be? But um, like they brought back the Care Bears. Why? They brought back. I mean, they brought back My Little Pony. Why? I mean, they brought back um Teddy Russell. Why? Why are you touching our things? All of our things. Leave it alone. We had them. They were the best. It's nothing you. I mean, and and, and now I was talking to a parent and saying that now a Care Bear costs forty dollars. The devil. The fact that a Care Bear with a little star belly calls, leave our stuff alone. So that that's where, you know, sometimes remakes to me can become problematic because I really feel like, where are your ideas? There's a reason why someone was gifted with this idea in 68. Come Thank up you. with something else that we could that can become an instant classic for now. Stop going back in the crates. Dust this stuff off and add in color and some grass and say, voila. Yeah. Yeah, new and approved. We don't like new coke. We don't like new coke. So that for 1968, I'm good with it. The new one. I haven't seen the new one. I mean, it did its thing for 199, but again, why are we touching stuff? You know, you, you have to be really careful when you put your hands on things that have become a cult class. That's like, who's going to redo, um, what's in that movie um, that comes out every year? Um, Let's do the time warp again. I can think of, the, it's like the theme songs in my head. What do you call that movie? And, and they have a huge following. Well, you're not talking oh, about the one that just came out where what's his name is chasing his sister. Mm-mm. This is an old one. And the guy dresses in drag. It's a horror film. God, what's it? I just said the name of the theme song. Let's do the time warp again. I cannot think of the name. Oh my God, it's on tip of my tongue. I bet you we will, we will get off the air and I'm going to remember the name of that movie. Anyway, you can't touch that movie. You know why? Mm-hmm. Because they still show the original in theaters to this day. Like there's a theater here oh, in Norfolk. Rocky Horror pic- Picture Show. Thank you. Woo, okay. Thank you, Jesus. I could not. I, all I could think was horror, and I couldn't think of the rest of it. Um, okay. We have a theater here that literally showed show that movie before COVID. Every I want to say every Friday night for years. It's like, and it would pack out every time. Every time it was like a little mm-hmm. small local theater. Yeah, so yeah. it's movies like that that you just keep your hands off stuff. Appreciate. Let it be old. Let it be corny. Let it be unpolished. And just mm-hmm. let it be. Mm-hmm. And enjoy mm-hmm. it. And then let it inspire you to do your best work. And stop cheating yeah. off the test. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Metaphorically yeah. speaking. Yeah. Stop cheating off the test. Yeah. Or, or if, you, if you feel like you got to do something with it, figure out how to continue. 
continue the story. Don't do this. Exactly. Because that's what it did for the fall. Mm -hmm. When the fall came back out, man, my mom and I went to the theater to see that because she was a big horror film um, fan. Mm -hmm. The fog explained why. And when I watched the fog, I had appreciation for you know for those powers that came out of the sea and killed them. But mm -hmm. it was a good for them. Good for them. So, <laughs> so for those of you all that have not seen the original fog or the new one, please see that. But I will also caution you: don't live off of a river like I do when you watch it. <laughs> Cause I'm looking at my baby when I'm like, oh. can it? <laughs> yeah, that part. <laughs> and don't and don't leave don't live in a seafaring town like I do, north of Virginia, <laughs> Virginia Beach, Virginia. Oh my gosh! <laughs> don't live near a lighthouse like we do. <laughs> just just there's certain things you just don't want to do. But I would say you know. <laughs> <laughs> I have a list of don'ts when it comes to this stuff, a whole list. Mm -hmm. So, Nikkei, you know, we've we've um, given our rating. Um, what's coming up next for movies that move we or media that moves we? What's coming up next? Okay, so I haven't decided yet. I, I think I really want to leave Candyman for last. I want to leave that for last. So I think maybe Probably next we week. That'll be next week. You don't realize the month is ending. Oh, no, I realize the month is ending. I just don't care about moving stuff into November is the point. Um, oh, so 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 now you're going so now you're going to upset the people that are already thinking about Thanksgiving. Wow. Oh, we you're got plenty. No, listen, I got this all thought out. I got it all. All right, you all. So if so okay. if if any hate mails to come, send it to Nick Cave Rice. I, I, I can WordPress.com. And for those of you that are Thanksgiving freaks, send it all so, to her. <laughs> the, last, the last two movies that we're, we're going to close out our little horror sessions, because the thing is, we missed a week. We missed a week. So the thing is, we're going to be doing Ma and Candyman to close things out. Oh, my God. Ma was a mess. Oh, she was a mess. Have you seen Ma? Not yet. Because, you know, what's my belief system? I don't watch that stuff in my own house. Oh, no, I no. Can't. You can watch Ma in your own house. You can watch Ma in your own house. She She's not a ghost or apparition. She's she's just crazy as hell. You just don't want her around your kids, that's all. Mm. I saw previews for it and was like, wow, this is deep. Mm -hmm. Oh look, the, the the previews barely scratch the surface, and that's good to know because sometimes you know the previews give everything away. So so now that you all know that we're doing for the next two weeks, and that Nikkei is Thanksgiving disrespectful. She's 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 coming on through in November, just you know just you know I don't know. We're closing it out big in November, and 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 just to let you know, I I love Jordan Peele because the thing he does is as soon as he opens the movie, look, he didn't even wait for the movie to start before he started throwing symbolism at you. I'm just going to tell you that right up front. He loves so, playing with symbols. So we have that look forward to. So you all, if you haven't seen Ma yet, definitely go see Ma. If you haven't seen Candyman yet, definitely go see Candyman. Um, Look to see what streaming um network says that it's on because I know the Candyman is not in the theaters anymore as it had been. So you have to kind of find it another way. Or 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 is it limited showing in the theaters? I know there's only one right. theater in this area that's showing it now and they show it at night on you the other clean on the side town. Yeah. You can definitely find it um to rent on Voodoo. Voodoo has it because look, I wasn't going to nobody's theater because some of y'all be hacking and coughing and doing all that stuff, and she cannot, she will not, mm -mm. and not enjoy it. And, 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 and my thing is, I I will I will take the risk not to have stuff swirling around in my house and keep me up at night because we already know <laughs> I can't sleep. So, I'm a, so, <laughs> so I, I, I I just don't need those things. You know, I'm a I'm an empath, and I am one of those folks that 
believe a lot of things. <laughs> I'm very open yeah. to what can possibly happen when it comes to the spirit world. I respect it. Look, I have I a see great, I've, I have a great um, respect and reverence. Not a, it, it only cuts into fear very, ever so often, but I have respect for what the spirit world has to offer. I just put it that way. <laughs> Look, I, I sat and watched that movie with a group of 20-somethings who hadn't seen it before, who hadn't seen either Candyman movie before. And they were like, oh, my God, I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. And they were like, OK. I we, can't watch with children. See, 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 they were annoying me. See, my thing is I just need you to be quiet. And they did. They did. And you know what they did by the time we started the movie over for the third time? <laughs> see that part. <laughs> them janky children fell asleep. Only one of them, only one of them stayed up and watched the movie with me. <laughs> Real jink. I was gene. like, you I was like, you know what? Y'all are weaklings. Y'all are and they, weaklings. And see, this generation of children, let me finish children in school one second. Mm-hmm. If something were to really pop off, I I would sacrifice them to whoever it is, Michael Myers, Freddy Krueger. I mean, just <laughs> I would just sacrifice them. You know, you know what? I can have more children. I don't know <laughs> what it means, but I mean, we'll work out. Adopt, loved you. It was real. Oh my, my heart! What I'm not gonna do is let you take me down with you because you weak as water. I'm. I will not do it. I will not do it. So, so if a zombie apocalypse or something real crazy pops off, it's a it's there two generations underneath us that I know are gonna be wiped out. Two, two whole generations. Okay. There's only one who hung in there with me. Only one. And the one who loves horror movies, completely not. When we tried to wake her up to put her on the couch so she could sleep, because she was sprawled out on the floor. Literally, literally sitting there trying to wake her up. She really did the whole, I don't want to ride the pony thing in her sleep. I was like, seriously? <laughs> really? Mm. <laughs> right. See, it's, it, it's people it was like night. that. See, it was a night. You, you, have, you, have to, you have to kind of know what you can use these children for. You can use them for technology <laughs> by all means. You can, you can use them. That's about it because I don't trust them to drive me nowhere. Not anywhere, but nowhere. So you can use, oh, and you can use them for anything that's trendy or fatty. They're going to have your edges together. They're gonna have your makeup beat. They're gonna have your clothes on fleek. They don't. They don't have you all way together. But if if we have to fight for real, I will remember you. You will remember me for real. That's. What it's like, like if you, you go up. that way, I'm going this way. <laughs> I, I'm sacrificing you for real. <laughs> them things gonna try running them clogs and them and those. They they walk right here wearing Crocs. Who are you gonna get away with? I'm gonna leave it alone. Okay, you know what? Today has been a really good show. <laughs> All right, guys. Listen, follow your mods on their platforms. I'm Nikkei. You can follow me on the K Rights. All WordPress. hate mail to her. All <laughs> hate mail. All this hate mail. All complaints. <laughs> She's the complaint department. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't know how to respond. I don't know how to respond responsibly to people who don't like what we do. So oh yeah, you know, goodness. if you want a real response and some changes, send it to her. If you if you want to fight, send it to me. You don't even know what I have planned for November yet. See, there you go. She messy, y'all. She's messy. <laughs> Don is not with us today. Yes, but bro. Follow him on donmiskel.com. And he's and, a king of horror. Yeah, he does this stuff listen, on purpose. Look, if he were here, he would have been giving you way more detail than us. He would have told you about the producers, the directors, the actors, where they were, where they were born, how many films they wrote. He's like a, a walking, he, and he stores it all up here. I don't know how he does that. He has like a Rolodex of information. It's crazy. But Don Miskell at donmiskell.com. And then this little troublemaker over here is NicoleDeCandice.com. That's where you can find her. Tell her quit picking on me. All right. <laughs> you want you want you want to file complaints? Complain about her picking on me. <laughs> Tell her personally. Stop picking on me. I'm a podcast right? bully. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. 
And the music that you heard at the opening was Robert Rice Jr. at smoothology.net. Yes. Make sure you follow him, download his music. Make sure you also like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I keep media down the that moves we. Yeah, media that media that moves we is the YouTube page, and oh gosh, movies that move we is our channel. So like, are it's you okay? Are you the, all right? Yeah. The cat is down here nudging me. I don't know what she's going through right now. She's like, yo, right now, I need you to get off of this thing and come pet me. She's just driving me nuts right now. All right. So, um, and also follow us on Facebook. Movies that move we on Answer Facebook. Answer questions or I would decline you. Morning, Listen, noon, and night. My decline finger is quick. All right. I don't see no answers. You don't get no entry. That's she declined a friend of mine that I sent to the page. Before I could accept them, she declined them. I was like, wow. I was like, this doesn't make me look good at all. I had to explain it all. And then I had to, you know, you know, re-invite. It was terrible. But anyway. <laughs> she, I was like, Kay is never up to decline anybody. So the time she declined, she declined the one person that should have gotten no one. I was like, this <laughs> you so if you go if you're gonna be letting people in the group, you know, you gotta warn me ahead of time. Just be That's like, listen, fact. look, look out for my friend Malcolm. I'm gonna be letting him I, in the group. I, I didn't blah, have blah, a blah, chance. Blah, blah, okay. Nikkei was no at her text, house. No phone call. Dude shows up she at just, the door. I'm like, oh, he ain't answering no questions. Blocked. Blocked. I mean, and it was severe. It was swift, swift and sure. <laughs> I was like, God dang. Listen, I couldn't sleep. I was awake. I saw it, and she just felt she just felt that type of way. So yeah, just answer the question. Sorry, dude. I didn't know. She didn't tell me. Blame I did. Her. I did. But definitely follow us. You know, we're we're gonna have. I think the K and I should do a different show. Um. Where we can really cut up and be silly because you know we bring a lot of that up here. You know we have our own personal issues and, and mm -hmm. we want other people to join our madness. So just mm -hmm. look for that in the near future. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that might not be a good thing. Anyhow, <laughs> thank you for joining us today. We will be back next week. Next week, at the time of this filming, next week will be Halloween. So yeah. So thanks for joining. <laughs> we'll see you next time, people. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.